get started, all right? Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to minister to these, your people. Father, I welcome you. Holy Ghost, you lead us, you direct us, you guide us into all truth. Thank you for the articulation of speech and thank you for the clarity of thought. Ask for your wisdom and your insight to, la- to, to navigate us, to lead us, direct us, and guide us into truth. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So let's go into this today. I'm excited. You know, um, as I said, we have been talking about this thing about the image of the king. And we actually been in this particular uh, segue for quite some time here. Now, I'm not saying we've been in this particular thought for quite some time. And I'm telling you, um, people are being blessed by this. Uh, uh, Lives are being changed. People are being transformed. I've, I've, I've received uh, numerous, actually numerous uh, inboxes and, and messages in regards uh, to the specific message. And so we thank you uh, for tuning in faithfully and consistently to this particular broadcast. And we thank you for being here with us, being able to listen to this word. And we pray that something is being said that is transforming the way you think about what you're thinking about. Right. And so let's get into this without further ado. So the image of the king, the image of the King, part seven. We're actually on part seven. So this is the number of completion. It doesn't mean that we're coming to a complete stop. It does, however, mean that we are shifting gears. And this week, as I promised in the last broadcast, we're going to go deeper into some practical application as to on in a daily regiment, in a daily regiment, a weekly regiment, if you will. Um, what is the routine of fulfilling uh, the image of the king? How does one walk in that? How do you appropriate that? We're going to talk about that today. All right, so write this down. Constitutional law. Moral article. So as we begin to look into the constitutional law and the moral article, here's what we begin to find. Morality is the functionality of the behavior of the Christ law displayed in the citizens. I'm gonna say that again, write this down. Morality, and we're talking about morality. Remember, remember, remember in the last broadcast, we stopped off talking about morality. I kind of gave an introductory kind of dynamic. Now, officially in part seven, um, actually this is part seven, but this is installment one into uh, the continuation of thought of, of, volume, of volume one. So this is actually volume two, part seven, but this is also the first installment there. That sounds very confusing. Uh, I'm simply saying that this we're starting a whole nother uh, um, uh, segment of this particular series on the kingdom, uh, on the enemy of the kingdom. I'm sorry, the image of the king. And in this particular um, thought, we're going to specifically address the, the different laws that we are supposed to be walking out and walking in uh, in this in this thing. And so it's, it's something I'm really going to break down as we get through this, because when you talk about constitution, you talk about law, sometimes it can get kind of confusing as to what is the most important. And we have to understand that the constitution is different than the laws and the laws are different than the constitution. I'll explain this as we go further, but write this down. Morality is the functionality of the behavior of the Christ law displayed in the citizens. Morality is the functionality of the behavior. So morality is how we function in our behavior using the law of Christ and using the Christ law inside our lives as citizens. All right. We're going to, and we're still rehashing this because again, we want to make sure we're abreast on this, on these particular thoughts. So every week you'll see us go over these particular definitions So we can have a cognitive understanding exactly what the writer's trying to articulate to us. What does it mean to have kingdom constitution? What does this mean? Right, here we go. Let's look at this. The constitution according to the kingdom means this. The basic principles and laws of a nation, state or kingdom or social group that determines the powers duties, functionality, and operation of the government or kingdom. I'm say that again. The Constitution literally means this, the basic principles and laws of a nation, state or kingdom, 
or social group. Now, those laws of that nation or that kingdom, they actually determine the powers, which we're talking about judicial power, executive power, legislative power, duties of the elect uh, uh, of the electoral or, or, or the elective judicial and legislative branches, the duties of those particular branches, and then how those particular powers function and operate within the government according to the constitution. So the constitution is, is actually the thing that helps us set, that helps us have the systematic structure of how a country is to run. This is why it's so important to understand the constitution because the constitution is, is what is the, is the mind of the founder, the mind of the creator, the mind of the actual, um, politician, if you will, what they had in mind when they envisioned this country. What, what, what did they have in mind? What did our forefathers in America have in mind when they grew, uh, created the Constitution? What did they have in mind? And we can see their mind in black and white or in black and cream, depends on if you're looking at the real Constitution or just a piece of paper. Okay. So now look at this. Because of that, which guarantees certain rights to the people, citizens in it. So because of the constitution, there are certain rights that are guaranteed to me. A written, a written instrument law embodying, embodying so, I mean, embodying the rules of the political or social organization or church. So, so the law, listen to me, the constitution is the embodiment of the political and social organization. Okay. The constitution now becomes the embodiment of the rules that are necessary for the, for the vision. Cause you know, the constitution, all the constitution is, it's a vision for a country. Write that down. The Constitution. Let me just summarize it. The Constitution is the is 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 the vision of a country. So in order for that vision to actually be realized or or, or have a reality for the citizens, there must be a set of a, a set of rules and, and and rules and laws that actually help the written document become a reality. And that's for us. That's where the law comes in. Right. Because the laws help us. It help us stay central focus to the fulfillment of what the king in our sense in the kingdom what the king's intent was when he designed and when he allowed citizens and sons of God to be formed and to be accepted. We're accepted as citizens. We were formed as sons. We're accepted as citizens. We were formed as sons. Now, I haven't even gotten to my lesson yet already, and I feel something already moving me. All right. Now. What is morality? In the laws of Christ, what does it mean to be moral? What is morality in the laws of Christ? So laws of Christ, morality. That's what we're going to talk about here. The laws of Christ, morality, or morality, laws of Christ. Here we go. Here's what it means. The rules of behavior in an individual citizen or a group. The personal conscience that are not a part of a legislated law. And, and let me add to that. You can't, you can't legislate law keepers. Now you can legislate, listen to me, you can legislate laws that, that people have to abide by, but you can't legislate the, the impulse, the heart, the desire to fulfill those laws or obey those laws, okay? So though a law is created, it doesn't mean because the law is created, it's going to be obeyed. Write that down. Just because the law was created doesn't, doesn't, doesn't mean automatic obedience will follow from the citizens. And that's even in the, 
That's even in, you know, as it pertains to the stuff we're talking about. Now, the difference between the laws in our physical world and the laws of God is the laws of God are irrevocable. It means they cannot be altered or changed. They're immutable. So you can't change them, right? So, so with the laws of God, if you don't change, nothing will change because the laws of God cannot be vetoed. They can't be tweaked. They can't be finagled. They can't be, squ- I mean, I mean, uh, uh, they can't be twist and turned. You can't go talk to God. If- no, his law is his law and he will not be changed. Praise God. So with the laws of God, you have to change in order for the law to become real in your life. And a lot of us don't know how to practically go through change and transition. So honestly, we don't never see the law of God or the laws of Christ actually. I'm sorry. We don't see the Constitution of God really being present in our lives. Now, look at this. A system of guidelines for behavior modification and character, right? For behavior modification and character. For behavior modification and character. These guidelines are codified in um, are codified in a written form and legally enforced. So, so in the constitutional document, that's the written form. The enforcement of that document is the Holy Ghost. All right. Now, morality is synonymous with. Now we're talking about Christ morality. Uh, uh, so, so the morality, uh, to, morality in the laws of Christ is synonymous with the command of with the commands of a spiritual law and natural laws of Christ. So, in other words, spiritual law and natural laws of Christ are, are the same as as uh, the actual what we call scientific law or uh, uh, the the law of nature or uh, the natural science laws or natural science, all right? A a set of universal rules that apply to every citizen. So the constitution applies to everybody. A general rule of right living, characteristic, characteristic rules for a group of citizens conceived through universal sanction of the king's will and the conscience of and the conscience of the nature of man in the citizen and natural justice the basic protection of rights is i'm sorry is the benefit of uh, is is the benefit of citizenship the basic protection of rights is the benefit of citizenship. So when I'm a citizen, my rights will be protected. Now, let's walk some of this down. We're finna get real practical here. Now, write this down in your notes. Practical application of Christ's law. That's what we're talking about in this, in volume two of this um, thought on image of the king. Volume two, part seven. This is the first installment to uh, number number uh, two, all right? Image of God found, where's the image of God found? In Christ's law. Now, here's the question. What is, what is the nature of man? What is the nature of man? This question right here, you know, I've heard it said before, and then, but I'm saying this question is powerful. Do you hear what I'm saying? This question is so powerful. Um, What is man's nature? Listen to me now. Let me walk this down before I show you the scriptures. Now look, the bird was created for the air. The fish was created for the water. Watch this now. The dirt was created to be walked on. It also was created to grow and procreate and to give life. The tree was created for the dirt and then created a, a partially for the sky. So it has a duplicity. Created for the dirt and its roots, created for the sky and its branches and its leaves. All right. The airplane was created for the sky. All right. Are, are you following what I'm saying now? You following what I'm saying now? So there are certain things that are created for atmosphere above us. And there are other things that were created for the earth and the world around us. And there are other things that are created for the for, for the ground beneath us. But everything was created for something. And it's only as functional as it is in its environment. I'm going to say it this way. 
Everything that was created from everything that was created, watch this now, everything that was created for the um for its actual dimension, for where it abides by, where it lives at, where it resides at, is created for that dimension, and it can only dominate and flourish inside the context of that which it was created for. I'm gonna say it this way: wherever God pulled out of it, he pulled stuff out of something to so it can control it so for example he pulled the fish out of land i'm sorry let me take that back he pulled the fish out of water and put the fish back in the water and so the thing that created the fish and sustained the fish is also the very thing that the fish must live in in order to have dominance God pulled the bird, y'all don't hear me, God pulls the bird out of the atmosphere and then puts it back into the atmosphere, and then God, from that atmosphere, gives the bird dominion over the air. God pulls everything that creeps on the ground, he pulled it from the earth, and then he put it back on the soil for it to govern on the soil. Now, I'm, I'm saying this for a reason. What is the nature of man? So God pulled man from the dirt of the ground and then turn around and put man over the ground that he pulled him from. I'm saying this to say this to you. Everything God has given you to govern started in you first, which means a microcosm. Okay, let me say it this way. You are inextricably and, and, and cohesively and intrinsically a part, a, a part of your destiny already exists. How do I know? Because I am my destiny. He pulled me from my destiny and then put my destiny in front of me and everything in my makeup that I'm designed to be according to the law of Christ. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry according to the plan of God, I have to become that because I'm only able to live and be successful and fulfill feel my potential in the atmosphere I was pulled from. Lord, I can just work this right here without even going into no notes because I feel this thing all on me. Y'all hear what I'm saying? God pulled, God pulled Eve from Adam and then he pulled Adam from the ground. Eve was never pulled from the physical soil. She was pulled from the spiritual soil. Hear me now. Are you hear what I'm saying? What I'm saying is God never went back in the dirt again to make Eve. God literally pulled Eve out of Adam. Bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. Matter of fact, the Bible talks about how God took man's ribs out and closed his side up. Do you not know that the rib is the only bone in the body that can be built back again? If you break your ribs, you're okay because your ribs will literally grow back. I'm talking about fully functional before you die. So let me say this. This to all y'all married couples. If God put Eve inside of Adam and then gave them dominion before he had a body, you have to understand that the spirit of the woman is inside the man and the spirit of the man is inside every woman. Now, let me clear this up because I don't want to give anybody license to think this kind of, I said the spirit. I didn't say the physical form. When God created man, he gave him physical form, but man was already a man without a body. Write that down. There was a male without a body. Eve is a, look, Eve was a female without a body. Oh, that about how shot that. You hear what I'm saying? So if you're looking to be a wife, listen, you're a wife before you're a bride. That sounds oxymoronic, but it's biblical. You are a wife before you're a bride. You don't become a bride. You don't become a wife after you're a bride. You're a husband before you're a groom. These are things we got to start teaching. This, this is kingdom thought. But this, this, is, this is kingdom thought. You hear what I'm saying? And this is clear. You got to understand. This is so clear. You got to understand this. Let me move on because I'm looking at my time and I'm not going to be able to get through all this stuff. Right? My 
but I feel so excited. So I, 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 I really want to bring this out. What is the nature of man? The nature of man is that which, which man came from. So I'm going to say it this way. You will only be able to steward, watch this, you will only be able to steward and rule over that which you came from. You will only be able to steward and rule that which you came from. And I'm going to say it this way. Your identity is wrapped up in what you came from. So if you want to know where God's taking you, look at where he brought you from. If you want to know where you're going, look at where he brought you from. If you want to know where you're going, look at where he brought you from. Wherever he brought you from, look at that. He brought you from heaven. Wherever he brought you from is a sign of what you will govern. So he starts the end at the end, and then he comes all the way to the beginning. And so he pulls, he pulls your end out of your beginning, y'all. You don't pull your beginning out of your end. He goes to the end, and he pulls your beginning out of your end. And that's why he knows how it's going to finish because he's already, he, listen, anything God starts, he's already finished. He never starts anything. He finishes, then he starts. So anytime you see a ministry, a marriage, a child, anything he gave you to start in time has already been finished in eternity. You don't hear what I'm saying? So when, we, when, we, when we're in relationships, when we have children, it's our, this is why I come, you have, to be in, you have to be in the pulse of God. You have to be in the mind of God. Because if you'll go to the mind of God, God will show you how to deal with that child. He'll show you how to deal with your spouse because the inside of every beginning word, is the completion of that work. All right, let me go further. I'm just trying to show you. Whenever we talk about nature, this is a huge question, believe it or not. What is the nature of man? So man's nature is kingdom. He pulled us from the ground and the earth and told us everything that has earth in it, you're, you, you are to dominate. Everything that comes from the earth, you are to dominate. So everything that is connected to the dirt and to the soil, we're supposed to, we're supposed to, I mean, we're supposed to um, multiply, we're supposed to replenish, we're supposed to subdue, we're supposed to have dominance over it. Why? Because he pulled us from that which he gave us to govern. So man's nature, anything outside the kingdom, man is operating beneath his nature. Y'all don't hear me. Our, our natural habitat is kingdom. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Our natural habitat. So if I'm hearing teaching and preaching that has nothing to do with kingdom, you cannot lead me back to the original design because you don't know what he had in mind because you cannot lead me back to something that's perpendicular to my nature. Your identity is discovered in the nature. Let me go on. I got to quit. Genesis 1, 26, Matthew 5 and 17. Look at this. Then God said, let us make, make man in our image according to our resemblance. Let them have dominion over. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. I'm going to clear this up as we go further. Watch this now. Are you ready? First point. Number one, man, male, female, is the representative figure of the Godhead. We are the representative of the Godhead, the very physical form of God we are the representation of. Number two, man, male and female, is the resemblance of the Godhead. So we're supposed to represent the figure of the Godhead, and we are the resemblance of the Godhead. Now, that's different. Representative means we represent the Godhead to the world. But um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I just got tongue tied. Representative means we are to represent him to the world. But resemblance means we look like him to the world. Mm. Look at number three. Man, male and female, should have kingdom dominance in equality over so male and female 
male and female have equality. So inside of every marriage, there will come a point where the man, you will start off with the man ruling and the woman submitting. But if you will become one flesh, you'll begin to even out. And in that equality, you will be separate but equal. In other words, we are two equal people with two separate functions. We are two equal people with two separate functions. And that's what caused equality. And it's not until a marital couple comes to the point of equality that they are at the point of the ability to be over that which God has given them to govern. So until you walk in oneness, until you walk in equality, which is oneness and unity, you're you're not, listen, you're not even at a point where you have met the requirement to be over the kingdom that God has designed that marriage to govern over. Every marriage has a kingdom assignment. I don't care, save the unsaved, they have a kingdom assignment. Marriage was designed to fulfill the agenda of the kingdom. Let me go further. Number four, the king didn't destroy the laws of God or the prediction and prophets. So Jesus did not destroy the laws of God or the prophets and the predictions. Number five, the king came to preach the completion of the constitution. He came to to preach the complete constitution. Moses only got it partially, but Jesus Christ comes to show us the completion. How to, he didn't just come to, to teach, he didn't just come to teach the rest of the constitution, but he also showed us how to complete, how to obey, how to fulfill the constitution. Look at this now. Benefits and privileges are embedded in the Constitution. If you want to know your benefits, if you want to know your privileges as a citizen of the kingdom, it's in the Constitution. Number seven, he is bound to the Constitution by his word. I'm telling you, uh, Psalms 103, I think it is in verse three. I'm telling you that the Bible says his word, he holds his word or Constitution higher than his name. God has such a fidelity and integrity for his own constitution that when Adam and Eve sinned, he could not step in and do anything because that which he created, he gave it laws to govern it and a constitution. Had God stepped in to stop all that that happened, God himself would have been considered to be an infidel. And if God would have become an infidel or a God that lies, everything he did from that day forth eternally would have been affected by his infidelity. So Man does what he does, but God has a contingency plan. Look at verse, I mean, look at point number eight. Point number eight, the constitution is the only reference for for life. There is no other reference for living. Without the constitution of the kingdom, you are merely existing. You are not living. Without the teaching of the kingdom, you are merely existing and not living. It is in the constitutional, it is in the constitution of God that we see life. And you are only supposed to refer to life according to the constitution. To refer to books, I don't care, take sermons about how to live your life without referring it back to the constitution is inappropriate, it's illegal, it's distorted. Number nine, Christ's law, laws of nature, natural science is the standard that allows correct operational functionality for everything that Christ, by faith, through the king's words, created and formed. Let me say that all over again. Christ's law is the standard that allows correct operational functionality. For everything that Christ, by faith, through the king's words, created and formed. In other words, it is the Christ law that gives us the standards, that that shows us the correct operation and function for everything that Christ created. Without Christ's law, we don't know the standard of of life. We don't know the standard of marriage. We don't know the standard of friendship. We don't know the standard of employment. We don't know the standard of work. We don't know the standard of faith. Without the Christ law, there is no standard. Let's go further. 
Number 10, understanding the laws of Christ ensures successful living and guarantees the completion of all purpose. I'm going to say that again. Understanding the laws of Christ ensures, in, guarantees, ensures successful living. You want to live successfully? Understand the law of Christ. And, and when you understand Christ's law, it guarantees the completion of all purpose. It guarantees the completion of all purpose. All right. Look at this. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, out the New King James, and it reads, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. In the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was um, though I was a husband to them, um, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, look at the covenant that he makes. He says, I will put in. This is the covenant we're talking about. This is new constitution. Notice what the king of kings said his new constitution would be. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. And... I will be their God and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. Let I me mean, for they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. All right, let's go deeper into this. Number one, get a little something to drink here. All right. Got a little parched there. Praise the Lord. Number six, it's just going right down the list. Number six, look at this. He desired to make a new constitutional agreement between the king and the citizens. This was the desire of the king of kings. He wanted to make a new constitutional agreement, a new constitutional agreement, so a new constitution. Number seven, the constitution of Christ is not an agreement for physical land. Man, Jesus, I got to help saints understand this. The constitution of Christ is not an agreement for physical land. Everybody talks about territory, but the territory is talking about it's not the territory of physical things. We get physical things as we begin to do the new constitution and obey the laws of Christ. But physical territory is not the objective of the constitution of Christ. It's just not the objective. And I know people talk about you need to go and take over your city. Not physically. He's talking about taking over people, not the not the physical. Look at this. The laws of the laws of Moses are null and void because of the Christ constitution. So because of the Christ constitution, everything that Moses talked about, the majority of it is null and void, which means it doesn't exist. It doesn't apply to us. Number nine. A constitution is the mind, heart, and intent of the sovereign power. Write that down. A constitution is the mind, heart, and intent of the sovereign power. So it's the heart, mind, and intent of the sovereign power. That's what a constitution is. And then watch this. It's laws. Laws are the rules by which the entirety of that constitution is to be lived, behaved, and obeyed. Laws are, I mean, laws are the rules by which the entirety 
talking about the Constitution, which the entirety of that Constitution is to be lived, behaved, and obeyed. Lived, behaved, and obeyed. Look at uh, number 10. Laws of Christ are, man, now here we go. We finna get really, it's finna get really deep. Laws of Christ are encrypted in the minds of humanity only through the reception of the Savior, Jesus, and kingdom renewal can the code be broken. So in other words, the law of Christ right now is encrypted in every single human being. Saved, unsaved, Buddhist, uh, Muslim, Confucius, LGBT. I, uh, you can talk about uh, uh, Satan worshipers, atheists, agnostic, okay, Satanists. All kinds of world religions and belief systems have embedded in them laws of Christ. Now, all of them have the law of Christ encrypted in them. In other words, the law of Christ is in them in a recessive level. I wish I had time to go real, real deep scientific. But what I will tell you this is when you look at the Hebrew language, just the Hebrew wording, the Hebrew alphabet, and you compare that to the human chromosome, you will find out some interesting things. One of the things you will find out that's very interesting is that the way that they spell the, uh, the Y in the Hebrew alphabet, a bit it's the same way that the y shows up in the human chromosome the way they spell x in the hebrew language in the letter x is the same way the word i mean same way the letter x shows up in the human chromosome this means our literal dna has the language of god encrypted in it i will show you other things like when you talk about the T cells inside of the human body, they are geometrically, mathematically shaped in the form of a T. I don't want to. I don't want to rock your mind. I don't want to rock it because some of y'all probably can't handle it. That's probably too deep for you. What am I telling you? I'm telling you that inside of every human being is the inscription of the laws of Christ. Waiting on the awaiting uh, on the actual conduct, waiting on the actual recipient, the actual conduit, which is you, to receive the king and the kingdom. Once you receive the king and the kingdom, and that comes into your life as you begin to acknowledge him, and as you begin to renew, because it's, it's, see, it's not enough to receive the king and the kingdom and don't renew your mind to kingdom thought. I know I've lived this. You understand what I'm saying? And I know people who have lived this. They got saved. They read the Bible, but nothing changes. It's because if you don't renew your mind to the kingdom standard, and, and you don't re renew your mind to the kingdom standard, you won't have citizenship status. Let me say that again. If you don't renew your mind to kingdom, you will not have citizenship status, which means you won't be able to have the benefits and privileges of your citizenship. You just received the king in the country, but you don't know how to operate in the country. And likewise, there are many Americans who do not know their constitutional rights. Likewise, there are many citizens who do not know their constitutional rights. And they are being defeated through their ignorance. And that's why the Bible says to us in, in Hosea 4 uh, and 6, God said to us, he says, people perish, and I'm paraphrasing, for a lack of knowledge. And then God says, those who refuse knowledge, I will reject as my priest. In other words, if you are willing to walk around and be ignorant and you're willing to walk around and remain stupid and ignorant about what you do not know, he says, I will reject you as my priest. I reject. And if he rejects you as priest, he rejects you as king because you cannot be a you cannot be a king in the kingdom and not be a priest king or a kingly priest. OK, and so what God is saying is your inability to know, learn, discern and understand and pursue kingdom. You will remain in ignorance, which means you don't have a knowledge of why you were created and you will not be able to break the encrypted code, even though you receive the king and the country of the kingdom. 
So the day that you receive Jesus, the day you receive Jesus as Savior, you also receive Christ as Lord, and now you just enter into a country. But I want to give you a very vivid picture. You can be, you, you can come into the country, but you will remain at the um um at the ice place. You will remain at the immigration office until you learn the Constitution of the United States of America. Likewise, you will remain in custody. You will be restricted. You will not have the privileges or the benefits in the kingdom until you learn kingdom thought, until you learn what it means to be a citizen. You will be restricted in what you can do. Lord Jesus, I feel like talking to y'all this morning. My time is almost gone here. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, the, the laws of Christ are encrypted in the mind of every breathing human being on this planet. And the only way to unlock, the only way to break it is you have to receive the king, Jesus Christ, into your life. And then you have to renew your mind in kingdom thought. Number 11. Christ's law is only written on the hearts of humanity. So Christ's law is not written on, on, on things around us. That's why come the Bible says creation grown and wait for the manifestation of the sons of God. And it talks, uh, and, and that's Romans, the eighth chapter. And it talks about how, how creation is living in vanity, in subjectivity, until a son of God manifests himself. Why? Because creation cannot be liberated until those who are the lords over it are liberated. In other words, the citizens of the earth, every citizen of this earth is subjected to, to the um, depravity. They're subjected to demonic activity until the sons of God, not believers, not Christians. Come on here. Not Baptist, not Pentecostal, not Charismatic, not Methodist, not Presbyterian, not Episcopal. No, not until the sons of God, the citizens of the kingdom are manifested into this world. Can the squirrel be liberated? Till the lion can be liberated? Until the weather can be liberated? Until the land can be liberated? None of them can be liberated until a son of God who understands their citizenship rights and their birthright to be kings in this world begin to walk in the kingdom that God has given them to dominate. Until you do that, creation will remain in travail. It will remain living in vanity. The weather is in vain and it lives a vain life. My God, I wish I had time to talk to you. The weather has no purpose without a sun. The weather has, that's why the weather is always crazy because there's no sun to give it directives. Yeah. The, 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 the cre things around cancer running crazy, corona running crazy. Uh, we got all kinds of diseases running crazy because there is no son of God that would give directive to the disease. The disease is looking for orders. Y'all don't want to talk. Your body is looking for orders. Creation is looking for orders. The universe is looking. Where is the man and the woman who has the order from God, who is walking in the directive who is walking in kingly authority. Where is the son of God that will liberate the universe? This is why I'm teaching on Christ's law. Because when you understand Christ's law, Christ's law begins to work automatically. When you come across people who, who say, I don't believe in science. They preach against science. When you come across people, when you come across believers who say science is against the Bible, run, run, run. Why? Because all science is, is, is all science is, is someone who has experienced the laws of God. They, they, they took a law, a theory, a concept through a series of experiments. And they have learned how to work a law down to a very practical level. Why do you think they can keep making airplanes? And you hear, you hear, you, you hear about very few airplane crashes. Why? Because they have learned aerodynamics down to a science. They have learned it down practically. They can tell you to the 
they can literally mathematically tell you what will happen. They can tell you if you're an inch off, what will happen. When a man is shooting from here to the moon, they can tell you if he's five degrees off, he's going to miss his mark. They know it down to a mathematical precision. When you come across people who say, I don't believe that the Bible, I don't believe the Bible is about science. I don't believe we should be talking about science. Run from these people. God has set up our universe to work in a mathematical algorithm. That algorithm we know as science is scientific law. It's natural law, which is the law of Christ. Nothing that was made was made without him. Nothing that was made was made without him. Everything that was made could not be made unless it was made through him by him. And he is the consistency of all living things. That means nothing exists without a strand of Christ in it. Nothing exists without the DNA of Christ in it. Christ is in everything. Nothing else could redeem us because nothing else had the original data. Nothing had the original DNA. Nothing else that God created had the original data in it. And as a result of that, the only one who could redeem us was Christ. And Christ put inside of everything that God spoke into existence, inside of everything God spoke into existence, God put a law to govern the thing he created. It's a foolish statement to come against science because you are coming against God's natural, and I wish you're coming against God's natural law. I wish this message would get in the church because if you understand natural law, you also understand that things will work automatically. Let, let me let me get through the rest of this lesson. Because I didn't jump way ahead of my notes. I didn't got excited, y'all. I'm trying to tell you, look at this. Uh, Christ's law is only written on the heart of humanity, which, which is the eternal gateway to the kingdom of God. Inside of your heart is... Inside of your heart is the law of Christ, and inside of your heart is the gateway to the kingdom of God. What are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you that it's the Bible talks in the book of Romans how they who had no law, they had no Mosaic law, but they obeyed the law. How, how could they obey a law that they were never given? Because the law of Christ is inherent. Don't talk to me about science ain't real. The law of Christ is genetically inside of each and every one of us. We automatically obey his law. And we don't even, you got sinners who give money to charity and don't even know why they do it. Because the law of tithing is an inherent law. And you got Christians who struggle to give. I'm gonna give you another one. You got you got you got sinners who have a greater appreciation for doing right by their wife, walking in fidelity at their job, walking in integrity. This is not just they they have they don't know God, ain't met God, but they walk and live in such a way that they are integral. Why? Because the law of integrity of Christ is walking in their life, it's a natural law. So again, what is the nature of man? The nature of man is God, it's the kingdom. And we have natural embedded laws inside of our human flesh. I, I, I gotta go on, I gotta go on, I gotta go on. I gotta stop. Number 12, because of the laws of Christ written on our hearts and, and decoded and decoded in our minds, the king has chosen us as his citizens. It's not until you decode the law in your mind that he really that you really become a citizen of the kingdom. <laughs> because of the laws of Christ written on our hearts and decoded. So it's not enough to have the law on my heart, but don't don't but don't renew my mind. If I have the law on my heart, but my mind is renewed, I'm not really walking in, I'm not really walking in citizenship. And it's only when we do that, that that he really chooses us as citizens. Write this down. Citizenship must be chosen and selected. Citizenship is chosen and selection. It's choice and selection. That's not in my notes, but write it down. Number 13. What we are only citizens 
of the kingdom of God because of the new constitutional laws of Christ that are on, I mean, that are on, I'm sorry, that are on our minds and hearts. I'm going to say that again. We are only citizens of the kingdom of God because of the new constitutional laws of Christ that are on our minds and hearts, that are on our minds and hearts. I'm going to read through these and then I'm going to be done. Uh, we're going to be done for today. Let me read through these. Number 14. It is, watch this, it is not the design of the king for the fivefold, the apostle, the prophet, etc., to exist forever. <sighs> so those of you who are caught up in, I'm an apostle, I'm a prophet, I'm, that it's not, his, his design is not for us. His design is not for us to live this way forever. One day, the fivefold is going to be done away with. Do you hear me? The fivefold will be done away with one day. It is, however, his desire for us to remain sons of God and citizens of the kingdom of God. Sons of God and citizens of the kingdom of God. That is his desire. Number 15. It is the king's desire for every man, male and female, to know the king and his lordship. It is the desire. It is, it is the king's desire for every, for every man, male and female, to know the king and his lordship. That's his desire. Look at number 16. The law of the king is that humanity may know him on a personal, spiritual, and eternal level. I'm going to say that again. The law of the king, not the heart. It's literally a law. The law of the king is that humanity, I just showed you this in Jeremiah, is that humanity may know him on a personal level spiritual and eternal level. It's a law. It's a part of the constitution of Christ and the law of Christ. It is a law of, from the king himself that humanity might know him on a personal, spiritual, and eternal level. Not just personal, not just spiritual, but also eternal. I know that sounds weird because eternal sounds spiritual, but they're not the same. You can, you can be spiritually in tune with God, but have no insight of eternal um, realms. No insight at all. Number 17, evil morality will be replaced with godly morals. Evil, mor uh, evil morality will be replaced with godly morals. We're still talking about how to practically apply the law of Christ in our morals. We're still talking about that. I'm just laying groundwork. Number 18, consequences of punishment for corrupt practices will all be pardoned. Consequences of punishment for corrupt practices will be pardoned. In other words, when you come into, see, you gotta understand this, with the Christ law, this is where grace comes in. With the Christ law, all consequences of punishment of being corrupt in your practices, because you're a citizen of the kingdom, he will pardon those things. Now, it doesn't mean I go out and I do stuff, but it does mean when I do stuff, as I'm pursuing him, he will now cause that consequence to be subsided. He will pardon me from what should happen to me. And, and, and this kind of covers a lot of you who feel like you think people are getting away. It's not that they're getting away. God is just giving them grace. He's giving them grace. Look at 19. The king, the king gives complete pardons to all perversion through the mental renewal of the law, I mean, of the Christ laws. The king gives, com gives complete pardons to all perversions. So any previous perversions or present perversions that, that, that a, a citizen or a, a Christian may have, 
the king automatically, listen, he automatically, he automatically completely pardons that perversion if that person and as that person begins to renew their mind in the laws of Christ. He will pardon you as you're learning the laws. So this is why you got to pursue kingdom. Number 20, the king doesn't, re um, the king doesn't record the transgressions or sins of the citizens of the kingdom. He doesn't keep a record of it. That's why the Bible says he throws your sin as far as it is from the east to the west. He doesn't remember you. when you are pursuing the kingdom, not just the king, when you are pursuing the kingdom as a citizen, automatically the king begins to exonerate you through not even keeping a record. He doesn't keep any record. So a lot of things we're throwing up to God. Well, God, you remember this? God, you remember that? God, like, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. I don't remember that. I don't remember. Because he doesn't keep a record of transgressions and sins of a citizen who was pursuing the kingdom. It doesn't mean I should keep sinning, but because my heart is to pursue kingdom, not just the king. Man, I got to clear this up. Because we got some lazy. I mean, we got some lazy people in the body of Christ. I mean, they just lazy. They just want to sit up all day and be in his presence. The angels do that. The angels, the angels are not sons of God. How dare you only desire to spend time with God every day and not fulfill kingdom agenda, not fulfill kingdom purpose. There are some folks, all they want to do is pray and fast, fast and pray, pray and fast. Get off your knees, put some chicken in your body, get some, get some starch and some veggies and go and do kingdom. We got some lazy Christians, man. Lazy. And yet we're not doing what Christ told us. He said, you'll never want priority. It's not spending time with God. Lord Jesus, I wish. I got, I got to preach this really strong right here. Praise God. Because some of us don't got this. Jesus said, that's not your number one priority. Spending time with God is a byproduct of pursuing the kingdom. Go do what your original purpose is. Pursue the kingdom. This is so embedded in the teaching of Jesus that after receiving prophetic word that he would die and raise from the grave, that before Jesus could have sinned, he seen that Peter backslid and he was already in an inner body, out of body experience. He was on the ocean, looked to the sandy shore. Man, I'm sorry, other way around. He was on the sandy shore and looked into the ocean and Peter went, he backslid back to go and fish. And before Jesus could fulfill his prophetic declaration and his prophetic word that was spoken over him, before he could go and give the blood that was shed on the mercy seat of God, for all of our sin, think about this. Jesus, he, he, he put everything he went through at the cross. I mean, they beat him black and blue. If you've seen the Passion of Christ, you know what I'm talking about. They beat him bad. He was willing to put all that on hold to go get his son, Peter, and reconcile him back into the calling that he had on his life. In other words, Jesus says, I cannot go up to heaven until I know my son is okay. I cannot ascend. Jesus could not go to heaven knowing that what he had came to do would not continue. And you got Christians. <laughs> so that shows you Jesus is showing us right there that being with God is not more important than the kingdom of Simon he gave us. And he had to go get Peter because if he didn't go get Peter, we wouldn't have a Paul. We wouldn't have a Timothy. We wouldn't have a Titus. Without Peter, there was no successor. So some of y'all that I'm talking to right now need to get off your blessed assurance. Praise, praise God. <laughs> and stop spending all this time with God and go do kingdom and stop praying about kingdom.
I'm sorry, I had I had to go spiritual daddy apostolic right there because I tell you that's one of the things that just it just when it comes to the kingdom message, people still are talking about pursuing God, pursuing God. He, Jesus never told you pursue him first. He said pursue the kingdom and pursue how to remain right with God. Stop pursuing God. You will get God as a byproduct of doing what he called you to do. When you show up in God's presence and you ain't did kingdom, when you show up in God's presence and you ain't did what he called you to do, you lazy. And honestly, when he talked about this parable about the talents, you actually are the servant with the one talent who did nothing with it. You are a wicked servant. It's wicked mind. And you're, you're wicked mind. <laughs> My father in law used to say that, man. Wicked mind, wicked man. You're, you're wicked if you show up in God's presence day after day, week after week, fasting and praying, and have not done the kingdom assignment on your life. You're lazy and you're wicked. All right. That's strong, but I got to tell you the truth. Somebody got to tell you. Got to stop all this foolishness on going on in the church. That's why I come Jesus can't return because won't nobody do kingdom. Number 21. The king removes the conditions of sin. The king removes the conditions of sin. When you begin to, to walk in Christ's law, he remove the conditions that sin will place you in. And sin, if you don't watch it, sin will put you. So I'm talking about if, 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 if you were a homemonger and you slept around multiple women and AIDS or, or sickness has attacked your body, God will literally remove that condition that sin has placed you in. As you begin to walk in Christ's law. And I'm talking about people who are saved. <laughs> and, 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 and our experience in STD because they were saved sleeping around. I ain't just talking about sinners. I'm talking about saved folk. Number 22. The king gives complete purification of sin. It is only the king that can purify us from sin. And he completely purifies us from sin. The power of sin, the presence of sin, and the person of sin are purified. They're cleansed out of our life, annihilated by the king, Christ Jesus himself. How? Through operating in the laws. We're going to get to it. I'm, laying, I'm still laying groundwork, y'all. We're going to get into this. Number 23, the king makes complete reconciliation of all prior infractions to the law. The king makes complete restoration of all prior infractions to the law. So everything you have done to transgress or go against God's law, whether knowingly or unknowingly, the king now completely reconciles. He brings you back into conciliation, back into the counsel and the wisdom of God. He brings you back into the kingdom culture. This is one of the fringe benefits of obeying and walking in the practical application of just doing Christ's law. Number, in fact, of the law of, of, of God. Okay, anyway, number 24. The king doesn't condemn the offenders of the law of Christ. There is no condemnation of offenders of the law of Christ. So people who are pursuing the kingdom God says there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in. Then the premise there is in Christ Jesus. So if I'm not in Christ Jesus, he has legal right to condemn. But those who are in Christ Jesus are not condemned. In other words, those who are in the kingdom and in the, in the kingdom through salvation, he says, I won't bring condemnation. In other words, I will not allow you to experience the penalty of your sin. That's what grace is there for. Some of you should have received stuff a lot worse than what you did. But because you have been pursuing the kingdom, God has been watching over you. Now, others of you ain't pursuing the kingdom, ain't thinking about the kingdom. You will continue to live worldly. Why going to church? You are a carnal Christian. I don't know if that's it, but you are carnal minded. And as a result, God cannot remove the consequence of the sin action you have done, even though you're a citizen. There is still condemnation there because there's not any pursuit in you to pursue the kingdom and how to remain right with God. Now, I've said a lot today. I'm going to be done. 
We'll pick this up next week and we're going to go right over this one right here. I'm going to stop on this one to let you know. All right. This is one we're going to cover next week. And we're going to cover these next week. And so uh, this is the scripture we'll be going over. John 6 and 45. So you can cover this in the next. We're going to cover this in the next broadcast. I'm just going to show you this. And I want you to go spend time looking at this because this is where we're going to pick up next week. John 6 and 45. John 6 and 45. We will be, we will be teaching part 7B on this particular installment. I'm telling you, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. I'm telling you, I'm excited, y'all. We're going deeper into this thought on the kingdom. And I'm telling you, we're teaching some really deep stuff. I'm going to leave the scripture here for a couple of minutes because I want you to see this. I pray that something today was said that that shook you and, and, and jarred you. And at the same time, not only challenged you, but helped you understand how important it is to walk in the Christ law. I want to give somebody the opportunity to receive this king in this kingdom. And we're going to do that through a simple act of prayer. So the Bible says, uh, according to uh, article, Rome, according to the Romans article, Section 10, subsection 13, it literally says, I'm sorry, subsection 9, section 10. It literally says, if a man would confess in his mouth and believe in his heart that, that the king raised the son, the savior from the grave, Jesus you shall be saved. Well, if you believe today, and if you want to be a part of this kingdom today, you've heard what I said. You're like, man, I want to be a part of the kingdom. I want to be right with the king. You've never given your life to the king, which is Jesus Christ. You've never given your life to him. And you want to do that today. Repeat this prayer to me. Say, say, Lord, Father, almighty God and king, I believe that you raised Jesus Christ, my Lord and King, from the grave. I believe that he died for my sins and he came to save me. I also believe that he is the son of God. Now forgive me of my sins. And I ask today that Jesus Christ would be the eternal king in my life. I give you free rulership to be my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you prayed that prayer after me, I want you to inbox us at Kingdom Kabod. That's Kingdom, K-A-B-O-D, at gmail.com. I want you to inbox us there. I'm not inbox us, but send us an email. We want to connect with you. If you've just um, repeated that prayer after me, we want to show you what this kingdom life is about. And we want to put some teachings in your hand. Now, if you are listening to this and you heard a lot of things I said and you have received the king as your Lord, you are a part of the kingdom of God and you're a citizen, but you're a citizen without active privileges. You are a citizen without without active benefits and privileges in your life. You're a citizen who has not seen the fruitfulness of what it is to be a citizen in the kingdom of God. And maybe you're doing things that you have done things. Maybe you did something this morning. Maybe you did something last night that is prohibited to you and, and preventing you from walking in all of what the king has to give to you. I want you to repeat. I want you to listen as I pray over you because he is married. He is married to the illegal immigrant in the kingdom, which is the backslider. He is married to immigrants who have went to another country and refused the country of their birth. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Holy, eternal king. 
I come before you now laying up a petition for this, your child, that is a prodigal child that is now returning back into the kingdom. Father, I pray that you restore their rights. You restore their citizenship status. I pray that from this day forward, that they begin to see the benefits and the privileges of serving you as their king. Jesus, we ask you to reign as king in their lives. Holy Spirit, be the governor and the administrator of their souls. Lead them, direct them, guide them. And right now, I assign angels to their ears, their heart, their mind, and mostly to their heart to guard them in all their ways. I pray right now that under the unction of my voice, all who are hearing this now and are hearing this at a later time, that, Lord, Father, you are switching and shifting the situation, circumstances that regard them and end their life. I pray right now that the anointing and the grace and the power of God is moving through this broadcast to touch their hearts right where they are. And I pray that as tears roll down their face, as they are overjoyed, as they begin to receive the kingdom, as a sign that they have been reconciled, as a sign they have been totally restored, I pray, Holy Ghost, that you will do something that only you could do, that is a significant sign of their reconciliation back into right fellowship and right alignment with the king, our eternal father, Abba Father in heaven, and Jesus Christ, the son of God. We pray all these things. Now, I put angels on alert. I put them on standby as they have rededicated themselves and they have been reinstated back into their citizenship status. I put angels as the army of heaven on alert against every satanic and demonic spirit that will come to war, prohibit, hinder, trespass against this citizen of the kingdom of God that you will go out of your way and fight and war on their behalf. We thank you for it all right now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that, if you touch and agree with me on that prayer, we also want to hear from you too. Inbox us at kingdomkabod at gmail.com. Look forward to hearing back from those of you who have just now been reinstated back into kingdom life. Now, with all of that said, we want to give you a chance to be able to give. But before we do that, I want to pray out and pray over this word. I thank you so much for showing up. I thank you so much for being in attendance today. Listen, all the things that we do at our ministry are for you so that you can walk in your kingly design. Let us pray. Father, we come before you once again, sealing this word. I put angels over this word and all those who will hear this broadcast at a later time, that this word will lead, it will direct, it will guide them. It will cause them to come into a better understanding of what you have called them to do and called them to be. And I pray for your wisdom, your insight, your advice. I pray that your love and your compassion would overtake them. It will overshadow them. And I pray right now that you would totally reveal yourself to them in every area of their life. We pray for all these things in the mighty name of the almighty God and in the name that we have access to the kingdom of God, Jesus. We seal this prayer. Amen.